Good to have you. Sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Brother. Thank you so much. You know, um, if people learn to minister to God all the time, you could be in the 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 very center of his heart, his conversations all the time, and he'll be able to show you more things. Did you know that people, they are seers because of their availability to be an audience of God all the time? Wow. So in the Old Testament, the prophet was formerly called a seer because the prophet was... Um, the, it was called a seer because the, the, the significance of this office was that the person was going to be able to look at very things that God would show them while they were in their physical body. Wow. So they were called a seer because they was going to be uh, walking in a very strong ability to watch from the lens of God to view things to, and to see things even futuristically, see things in the past and see things in the present. So we have nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that the Word of God talks about. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is called the Word of Knowledge. Mm. The Word of Knowledge is a very powerful uh, prophetic gift because while the word of knowledge is operating. God is entrusting you with information, whether it be your own or someone else. Wow. But oftentimes with the word of knowledge, God is speaking to you about someone else because it is an act of his love in that gift. He wants to tell the person, I see you, I know you, I care about you. So with the word of knowledge, why is such a potent gift? Because God is talking to you about something that you can identify with. Mm, wow. So it's something that clicks in your brain when you hear God talking to you about something that you can identify with yourself. And it gives you a sense of worth and value that the Lord is studying you and he knows you by name, by, uh, by a certain specific characteristic that you yourself know personally is not something vocal all around the place, but it's personal that you know. And so when we look at the gifts of the spirit, it's important that you look that it's called gifts. Mm -hmm. You give a gift to somebody because you want to show them that you love them. Mm -hmm. So the gifts of the spirit are all acts of God's love to not only the saved, but the unsaved. People with demons become recipients of the ministry of the word of knowledge. Wow. Mm -hmm. People that have um, unclean lifestyles, they also become recipients of the ministry of the gift of the word of knowledge, meaning like God will use somebody to minister word of knowledge to them, to show them that that person, to show that person that he wants them to come out of their sin and he has a plan for them. Every believer can walk in the word of knowledge if you are willing to spend quality time with the Lord mentally mm -hmm. and verbally. Wow. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to make that press to spend time with the Lord mentally and verbally, you could hear all the time from God. Mm -hmm. Wow. There is a department in everybody's soul that was made to hear from God 24-7. I mean, all the time. Because that's why he made you. God actually wanted to talk with you. So when you move in that, there is uh, a unction that you receive, a special ability to know God's communication where he'll talk to you about things, not only concerning yourself, but concerning someone else because he trusts you. Mm -hmm. Wow. What you what you see? Wow, and the the word of knowledge, the gift of that is it, it's a, a pure uh, motive from God. Mm -hmm. It's pure. It, it's not gonna violate you. It's very it's very respectful when He comes and gives you what He's what the Father is thinking through a prophet. It, mm -hmm. It's so unique and pure, 
And, and, and the other thing that you need to understand is that when you start serving, it, it has to be in a pure state in your heart. And when God gives you that type of gift into your life, it's for you to showcase the Lord Jesus Christ, not to showcase you and the abilities that God placed in you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mistake those gifts and, and they start show, showcasing themselves instead of the Father. Mm -hmm. And that's when it becomes wicked and corrupt in you. So would you say that the gift, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> even the carrier of it, they will have to keep maintaining that humble fellowship with them and the Lord so that that well of that gift could flow out of them with a pure heart, from a pure heart. Yes. Because um, it's really a love thing that these gifts are given. It's not for, it's not for embarrassment purposes. It's mm -hmm. not for to make someone feel inferior. It's actually God. He made these gifts out of his love for man. Mm -hmm. And he gives it to a narrator mm. so that they could uh, articulate or demonstrate, show forth the glories of these gifts so that the person that's receiving it could feel love. Wow. Mm -hmm. There's a tangibility of God in the gifts of healings. Mm. Wow. Wow. That when the gifts of healings are moving. Now, why did the word of God say in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and on, why is it talking about that there is the gifts of healing? Mm -hmm. It's called gifts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not gift. It says mm -hmm. gifts of healing. Of healing. Wow. Because there is a healing for the soul. Mm -hmm. There's a healing for the body. Mm -hmm. Wow. There are many gifts. Mm -hmm. So somebody needs to be healed the healing may be um, from the wound of molestation or the wound of rejected or the wound. So the healing has many different gifts wow. because there's many different departments that needs healing. Wow. So if somebody comes argue with you and you don't argue back with them, they have wounded you even though you didn't argue back. Mm -hmm. Because what they wow. said to you, their rejection of you, their hostility towards you, it wounds your soul. Wow. So it damages you unknowingly. Mm -hmm. You don't know that you got damaged, but you got damaged. So even though you didn't fight back with them, they still was able to wound you. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not fight back with Pilate or fight back with the Roman soldiers or the chief priests. But Isaiah the prophet said he was wounded for our transgressions. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. So Jesus got wounded without the law of engagement. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes you think that you get wounded if you get in, in a, engaged in something. But you get wounded even if you don't engage in it. Um, if somebody talks bad about you, you may not engage in them talking bad about you. But your soul, when it gets knowledge of it, gets wounded. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you something, son. In life, in life you can understand what dimension a person is in when they know that people are talking about them or know that people don't like them or know people are hating them and they are unbothered in their focus. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has that nature in you that you get wounded when you hear that somebody doesn't receive you. Mm -hmm. You get wounded. And you want to respond with the wound. Wow. Mm -hmm. But if you could take on the nature of Jesus to not respond, mm -hmm. that's how you know what level of rank you're in. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm in the God class. If I could fulfill scriptures, blessed are you when men persecute you for my sake mm -hmm. and speak all type of evil against you. And it says that uh, yours is the kingdom of heaven. If you could have that happen where you go through stuff in life that it wounds you, but your response is not predicated on that wound. Mm -hmm. Your response is predicated on wisdom. Mm -hmm. wow. And so David behaved wisely. Your behavior is affected by wisdom. Mm -hmm. When wisdom comes, it takes over your conduct. I want everybody to start recognizing this. Look what First uh, Corinthians, what it says right there about love in verse um, 5. Verse five. Chapter 13, verse 5. It says, Does not behave itself um, seemly. unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easy provoked. Think no evil. So, first John, uh, no, first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, is saying that love does not behave unseemly. Are you catching this? It says that love does not behave unseemly. So it's saying unseemly is dealing with that when you have love, you don't become disobedient in your conduct. You don't become um, hateful, wicked, weird, awkward. You don't start mistreating people. You don't start acting with a nasty attitude. It doesn't behave unseemly. Mm -hmm. wow. So when you think about this, behaving wisely means that you don't behave unseemly. You don't let yourself be taken out of character by wounds. Mm -hmm. wow. You don't let yourself be taken out of character because of going through an experience where you are confronting hate. You're confronting person. You know, son, for years, um, when I when I started off ministering in the public eye, you know, I got on social media and stuff, uh, the misunderstanding of power and the misunderstanding of abilities is it, always going to happen. People are always going to fight you, but it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't fight you, that means that you're not in the word. Mm -hmm. And if they don't come against you, then you're not fulfilling what happened in the word. The word is talking about these things will happen. The world will hate you. Mm -hmm. So many people respond different to hatred. Some people go hide in the shell. Mm -hmm. Some people stop doing what they was doing before. Some people become um, engrafted in shame or offense. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, you have to remember that God is also making you a gift of the Spirit to the earth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Remember all the gifts of the Spirit is, 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 is done for the purpose to showcase God's love. Mm -hmm. Well, God makes you a gift of the spirit as well. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Wow. So yes, there's gifts of healings, but you become a healer. Mm. Wow. Yes, there are gifts of prophecies, but you become prophetic. Wow. Yes, there's gifts of discerning of spirits, but you become discernment. Wow. That when somebody watches you, they say, oh, she not doing that. Okay. Uh, okay. I got, I got a cheat sheet here. He, he's not doing that. I got a cheat sheet here. So you become the gift of the Spirit, but you can't become the gift of the Spirit properly if you yourself don't master the Spirit of love. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, son, when we deal with the, the ability of the prophet, when a prophet is in your life, everything that they do, as you're serving them, you have the same ability. Mm -hmm. So their operation and functionality, you can do also. Mm. That's why 
when God is operating on the earth as a prophet, he pits people around that prophet because these are the people that he wants them to come into that same realm of that prophet and have that same spirit operating in them to do the same works. Wow. To have the same brain. Wow. So, son, you can have a vision at any given time of the day. Whoa. Because visions that are intentionally received mm -hmm. by you mm -hmm. come because you're in a complete focus state with the voice of God. Wow. So when you're completely focused on the voice of God, which often rarely happens, you step into a zone where God talks to you in visions. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, God could give you a vision even though you're not focused. But when I'm saying you, you want to be a constant recipient of visions, mm -hmm. you have to sow the seed of deep concentration. Wow. You have to be listening in a zone. Mm -hmm. And you got to be in a place where you're unwilling to step out of that at any given time. Mm -hmm. And God will talk to you wow. randomly. What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your take on that ability being transferred from the prophet to you and that's the whole goal of God placing the prophet in your life. <laughs> the, the prophet is a gift into your life. It's a gift into your life. And you have to be able to work that gift. Yes. And and a situation that happened, I think you said it on the line too, like um, I mm -hmm. think it was a few months ago where, where something was happening with my eye. Mm -hmm. And 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 you you gave me power. You told me, do this, curse the thing. Mm -hmm. And, and I did it. And when I did it, it started dying off. So the same thing tried to happen again in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but this time I started uh, cursing to the thing and die. And, and it did. Mm -hmm. But that's because the gift, I received your gift into my life. And when you gave me the power and authority to walk in the same ability that you have, and I speak the same words you gave me to use. Those words became a life and materialized in my life and resolved a problem that I had. Imagine everything that can be solved if you apply every word that our prophet gives you. All this wisdom, all this information from God. And it's so powerful, the teaching you was giving about... Um, the blessing is information from God to unlock the blessing that is in you. So you become a blessing yeah. when you unlock all this information that comes from God and you receive it. But having a prophet in your life, it's, it's just amazing. It's an honor. It's a privilege. And don't take it for granted. Don't take this gift from granted. Use it. Utilize it. Elisha said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Strikes the, wa rock, uh, uh, the water. The water goes from one place to the next. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Wow. Elijah's spirit is carrying events of the water dividing. Mm -hmm. So when Elisha is saying, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Elisha is recognizing this impartation I received from Elijah, I now could do what I saw him doing. Wow. Yes. There's no such thing as a spiritual father, son. Nope. <laughs> There's no such thing as a spiritual father. Abram is not called the spiritual father of faith. Mm -mm. There's nowhere in the Bible. <laughs> There's nowhere in the Bible. You're not going to find it. Go look in the Bible where it said that Abram, the spiritual father of faith. There's nothing in the Bible about spiritual. There's no such thing as spiritual father. When Elisha saw Elijah leaving, he didn't say, my spiritual father, my, my, my spiritual father. He said, my father, my father. Wow. Man made an a, 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 a identity of spiritual father because truth of the matter is man try to avoid disconnection. Mm. Wow. So they say, well, this is my spiritual father. This is my father. This is the father of my children. <laughs> this, is the... <laughs> this is the father of my chickens, my palomas. 
<laughs> this, is, this is the father of my bills. Mm-hmm. Or this is my father of my wardrobe right here. Mm-hmm. This is my father of my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the actual store. <laughs> the father of my groceries. Wow. And another thing, Father, that they made um, the title of a spiritual father too is because they don't want to be committed mm-hmm. to that person. Mm-hmm. That in reality is their father, but they don't want to be committed. They don't want to. They just want to like uh, occasionally. They want to mm-hmm. uh, access them or or, mm-hmm. or you know interact with them, but that's not the, the case. And mm-hmm. if you call somebody spiritual father, it's because you're trying to protect yourself for what what they might say something about mm-hmm. me if I call him a father. Mm-hmm. They might you're trying to protect your dignity. Mm-hmm. And and like Papa said, it's not gonna work if you try to protect your dignity. Dignity. Mm-hmm. Because um, oftentimes, like you know, uh, when people step into that zone, your actual father, who is according to how God saw it, when they come into your life, you may be connected to the father that placed. Uh, the the handbox, <laughs> <laughs> the ham, cheese, and biscuits inside the mama, right? Bread basket. <laughs> so, in that state, the person becomes in a a, a conflict because it's like, well, my, the one that pre, pre, placed the ham hocks inside of the bread basket is saying to me something. And the one that's feeding me the word is saying something else. And when that collides, then the person feels safe saying, my spiritual father, my father here, my father over here for my children, (laughs) my father for the Palomas. (laughs) (laughs) But truth be told, the father in heaven loves you so much that he camouflages himself in a body because Zebedee was the one that entered into the mother of James and John. Mm -hmm. He entered into the bread basket with (laughs) 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 hammock. Butter biscuit. (laughs) Grandma biscuits. (laughs) Mama biscuits. And it was... Zebedee that entered into their mother. All right, the fruit fryer <laughs> and the cantaloupes and all the <laughs> the, the enduring pickles. <laughs> and it it was that way. But now <laughs> Jesus, it was, <laughs> it was Jesus that came on the scene, and Jesus is the one saying, "I'm the Father." Mm-hmm. Wow! But <laughs> <laughs> but when Zebedee was with the Palomas, <laughs> when Zebedee was there. According to that format, Zebedee is father. Mm -hmm. But when they are now being recruited for the will of God, Jesus is father. Wow. So that shows you there's a lot of concepts that are not real to you until you're in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lot is fighting with God to leave Sodom and Gomorrah because he's not in the spirit. He has spirit beings right there Mm -hmm. trying to push him out. They say he wrestled with Lot. But Lot is not in the spirit, so Lot is fighting. Mm -hmm. When you're in the spirit, what is truth is not truth to you. It's still the truth, but it's not truth to you. Mm -hmm. How many things today Okay, so let me ask you a question. Don't tell me your age, but how old are you? 
I, I'm doing this for you to think. Okay, so some of you are 20 something. Some of you are 50 something. Some of you are 60 something. Okay, so let me ask you something. If you're 50 something, 60 something, 70 something, when you was 30, did you know what I'm saying to you? But if somebody asks you what you believed about a thing, you would give your interpretation. So you would be saying what you felt was right at that age. Mm. Whoa. Whoa. But now you're later on in years and what's being said to you is right. Mm. So when somebody met you at that age, all you could do is deceive them. Because mm -hmm. you, you didn't have the proper information inside of you. So even if you told them and you said, I really said this out of sincerity, but it was still destructive because mm -hmm. the information inside of you wasn't at, up to par as it is today. Wow. So a lot of times you're not in the spirit throughout the first courses of your life, which means that you are a liar and you only receive lies. Mm -hmm. wow. Yes, wow. So when God brings you into the truth, you have to be careful that that lying dimension that you have operated in from the beginning don't rise back up and you start leaning over to the lie instead of to the truth. Mm. Whoa. That's what would happen if I say that there's no spiritual father, you have a father and stuff. Somebody would let me go back to these lies and find out. <laughs> I, I don't believe that. <laughs> because it, it's been so commonly said that bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. But do you know that there's people, they're... Man of God will come into their life. And the man of God is their father. They will disobey him and they will follow what the, the man that went inside the mother is saying. Mm -hmm. And the man that went inside the mother is not hearing from God to talk to them. Wow. So they'll take his word and disconnect from the man that God sent to wow. father. Wow. Let me give you an example as well. The Bible says that Sam's son's parents was telling him to marry somebody that they were familiar with from their country and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said they did not know what the Lord was doing. Mm. Wow. They was telling Samson to go against God's will. Whoa. They were saying, Samson, don't do this. You need to do this. And the Bible says that they didn't know it was an occasion of the Lord, that it was the Lord's doing. They did not know God's will. Wow. That happens a lot. The people that you come from, whether it be their womb or whether it be uh, uh, their broom, <laughs> <laughs> both the womb or the broom, they could be carrying words that are of the tomb. Mm, whoa. And you can't receive the words because they'll kill your destiny. Wow. So what's your take on all this? Wow, it's so, so amazing. And it's so true what you were saying about having your, your father from, from heaven and, and having your natural father. Like, it's going to be a, a collision in, in instructions from each one of them. And you have to decide whether you're going to stay with the father assigned from the foundation of the world that is your prophet or you're going to listen to somebody that was used is to bring you into the world yeah mm -hmm. so that's where you have to decide and stick to that decision mm -hmm. to stay with the father assigned to you from the foundation of the world that is your prophet that's your apostle and you see, what, what was the sons of Zebedee going to do if they didn't, if they had that concept of spiritual father? They'd be like, my spiritual father telling me to follow him. Mm -hmm. But my father told us today we're fishing. Mm -hmm. They saw, okay, my father is calling me. Mm -hmm. Now I've met my father and that's where I go. The same way Elisha, so when Elisha first met Elijah, the Bible said that he wanted to go kiss his parents goodbye. Mm -hmm. Then he went. He wanted to go cook them some filet mignon and some stuff. Palomas. <laughs> some palomas. <laughs> yeah. So, look at the conflict. But 
Now at the end of Elijah's life, he's saying, my father, my father. Mm -hmm. But he had to be trained. Wow, yes. He had to get trained. The gifts of the spirit, they move in your life. And everybody has different gifts. And everybody has at least one gift. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the gift of faith. But the gift of faith is powerful because it introduces you to other miraculous abilities. But everybody has a gift. And when you move in the gift that you have, there's supernatural results that you start to walk in. Recognize that I have a department in my life every day to talk with the Lord all the time and to listen for his voice all the time. And he'll talk to you. And whatever you receive grace for, that's what starts operating in your being. Receive grace for your eyes to be opened. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to see what you're not seeing and to open your ears to hear what you're not hearing. And ask the Lord to activate more of himself in your functionality that you want to be just like him. And watch how the gifts of the Holy Spirit start moving through you. Watch how there be a love language of God speaking through you to others. And recognize that I have a prophet that everything they can do, I can do that ability. And there's an impartation and transfer happening to me. So you have seen me prophesy in secret, mm -hmm. do miracles in secret, do things, even opening doors, clarifying papers, releasing favor and, and paperwork and, and justice. And you've seen so much miracles walking with me. That's private. Mm -hmm. It's not showcase. No. But see, that ability is in everybody connected to this ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. As you are knit with me, you honor me. There are, there are some of you all, you sow seeds into me. Don't sow seeds into me and not know me. Wow. Because then you are robbing yourself of what has been made available to you. Hmm. Wow. The same glory the Father has given me, I've given you. Hmm. And if you have it inside of you, speak different, act different, think different. Mm -hmm.